Um, what we have today with us are four prominent young bloggers from Asia. Uh, let me go through them one by one. First of all, next slide, please. We have Hong Kong Fui from Hong Kong. Uh, Hong Kong Fui is uh, his real name is Victor Victor Lung. He's one of the most one of the leading tech gadget bloggers in Asia. He's also a regular columnist for Seen in Asia on a blog there. Uh, one of the most sought after. Uh, tech bloggers around Asia, so we're very lucky to have him with us today. Thank you for joining us. Next. Next, we have Kenny Sear. Kenny Sear, whoa, <laughs> has apparently quite a following. Uh, he's currently working full time in IT management, uh, and besides authoring kennysear.com, he also writes a regular col column in Clue magazine showcasing the best of Malaysian blogs. Sia's blog has won a number of uh, awards, and although Kenny's from Malaysia, apparently he appears to be more popular here in Singapore. Welcome to Kenny. Thank you for joining us. Next, we have uh, the Compulsive Confessor, based in Mumbai. Uh, Menakshi here has attracted a, contr a controversy with her personal blog, touching on issues uh, mostly considered taboo in large parts of society in India. She's often referred to as the Indian version of Sex in the City and has actually captured a book deal on the basis of her blog. So please welcome Menakshi from India. And last but not least, we have Unique Frequency. Yes, again, thank you very much. Kenny, uh, Unique Frequency, is re his real name is Daniel, uh, Daryl Tay. He's a third, third year student at Singapore Management University and he's majoring in marketing and corporate communications. He engages in traditional media with SMU broadcast and entertainment and in new and social media with his blog. Uh, he can also, he's also the co-organizer of the first social media breakfast Singapore, in Singapore that took place in March. And uh, well, please welcome Daryl as well. Now, the point of today's blogger panel here is, of course, that we want to enlighten you as much as possible into the minds and doings of uh, Generation Y and Generation X we have over here, but also in terms of uh, hopefully giving you some insight into what makes blogs work, what, how the blog sphere works itself, how you can get in touch with the blog sphere, how you can uh, make everything basically reach the audience you want to reach. So let's get the discussion started, although at any time, please do interfere with us and give us any of your questions and thoughts that you might have. We'll be happy to discuss that with the panel and give their views, thoughts and views on what you, the questions you have. So let's go on with the first discussion slide here. If you'd have the next slide, please. Just put uh, things in perspective. Blogs are absolutely booming. This is uh, from technorati.com, just showing you sort of a a snapshot of how blogs in the world are going through the last, uh, until about a year ago, and it's keeping going up. And actually mentioned something earlier about how many blogs that work each day now being created in India, and I'm sure it's, uh, she can get back to that later, but it's sure it's a huge amount of blogs everywhere in Asia. And even if you go on to advertising and blogs, if we can have the next slide, the advertising space as well is generating quite a few uh, money as well. Uh, back in 2006, somebody said that about 500 million US dollars were generated through advertising on blogs, mostly concentrated on very few blogs and something, uh, uh, sort of an image that's going on and on. So obviously blogs are there, they're there to stay, and they have a big impact on users and society around us. So what kind of impact do they have? If we can have the next slide. This is a... Uh, those who went to my presentation earlier would know I, I quoted Scott Adams a few times. This is uh, another quote from Scott Adams. In the future, everyone will be a news reporter. I guess that's part of what blogs are about, isn't it? Uh, are you sort of in doing your blogs to be news reporters, or is it just a very personal thing for you? And what do you think about news and blogs in general? Um, perhaps, Kenny, you could start talking about that. Well, not really, we're not really out to be news reporters. We're not really out to compete with newspaper journalists. Uh, basically, for me, and I think for many of the casual bloggers out there, we are out to write things uh, from a personal perspective, from our point of views. And that, um, you know, that is basically our experiences, the experiences that we share, our opinions, our perspective, things we look at. And to what extent do you feel that you are uh, becoming an alternative to news media? 
Uh, do you feel that you're getting more and more readers who go to you for current news? Kenny, you're one of those bloggers who are lo talking about everything that's current. So they're going to you, your website for uh, an update on what's happening in society? Yeah, I guess um, I'm getting quite a lot of feedback about things that's happening around and people wanting to know what, what is my opinion on certain issues. So I, I seem to get that, in, that sort of interaction from, uh, from the readers. Um, of course, I'm not a you know, I'm not news, reporter. I, news reporter. I don't go out to events and, and report, hey, this is what's happening right now. I don't go to Afghanistan and report a war over there. <laughs> you know, but um, based on what I see in the news, in the papers, or things around me, it could be something so simple like a new restaurant is opening and, uh, and whether the food there is good or not, whether it's hyped, overhyped or underrated. Um, it could be something simple as that. I, I guess in that sense, yeah, people do see me as a source of information. And likewise for you, Min, actually, in a sense, you're writing about sort of nightlife and stuff, uh, the, the sweet life uh, in Mumbai. Uh, do you find that a lot of your readers go to you for advice on where to go or what's happening? Where to go, yes. But as a journalist, as well as being a blogger, um, I would say there is, there's vast differences. Because first of all, I, I like to have credibility, but I don't have to have credibility. I can, I can bitch about something just because I feel like it, because I don't like the people there or something, you know? And at least in India, blogging is not going to replace the media for a very, very long time. Do you see a problem with, if people are going more and more to the blogs for these things, uh, and less and less to sort of review sections of papers, do you see any kind of uh, clash between what you're doing and what should be done in the news media, especially if you get a huge following that starts really taking what you're writing seriously? Do you feel that there's a potential clash between what you do and traditional news media? I think it's not a clash. I think it's more like supplementing each other. I would, I would read both, a film review in a newspaper and a film review of some, a blogger I was following regularly. Hmm. Victor, you have a, a tech blog. You do gadget reviews and stuff. Uh, do you feel that you're overlapping with the, uh, should we say, the tech magazine there? Or are you encroaching on their space? You no, know, well, for us tech bloggers, it's a bit different, you know. Well, of course, you have the traditional, the, the, the PC sites or the user groups you know, where they publish all these uh, reviews and previews when a new product launches. But what we do with blogs is um, we sort of consolidate all these different views together because it's, you know, for, like, say, the new mini PC that's coming out from HP, you know, someone might like it from PC Magazine, but someone from CNET might hate it, you know. But we just put them all together and then we try to get the users and um, the readers together and then um, it's more like a forum but a more casual way because people on blogs there tend to voice out their the true inner feelings, you know. If they don't like something, they really tell you and make a point, you know, to some extent some of my readers even make videos that's approved, you know, on like um, certain models of machines which they don't like or they have been having problems with, whereas vice versa, whereas um, a very prominent um, PC site might be giving them like a 9 out of 10 stars review, stuff like that. And uh, Daryl, did you have, your blog is a bit different in this respect, because you're writing a lot about enterprise, the enterprise side of Web 2.0 and what kind of social media tools they can deploy and, you know, your views on are they doing it the right way and stuff like that. Do you feel that it's something that news media is not covering well enough, uh, but you were covering it? Um, well, for my particular niche, I think yes, like um, social media is not really getting mainstream yet. And um, back to the journalism question, I think that's the difference because um, when I pick up things or articles from somebody else, there's the whole back of like um, people like me, the whole concept of someone who I trust, who is relevant to me. And therefore, when they say something, I'm definitely going to take it with more notice and emphasis than over someone who writes a review in the paper, for example. Mm. Now, uh, we have a question from online, so let's take one of those right now. Uh, we are streaming this whole event online, and we're hopefully having viewers from all around Asia and indeed the world. And one of the questions we got there was, how active do you think the uh, community, the blogger communities are in your specific countries? If we start from the end, Minakshi, you, you, you sense quite a bit of activeness in India, don't you? Um, I would say an approximation is something I read, so I, I can't verify it, but there are about 40,000 new blogs a day in India. Uh, out of which not a very great percent of it is, are active bloggers. They begin a blog and then they, they, they don't continue. But also because India is a big country, not everyone has access to the internet. So you're looking at a certain economic profile 
and you're looking at the cities, not at all in rural India. There's no internet access at all there. So yeah, that, it's always tied to that. Yeah. And do you feel that they, do you see that you're actually sort of gathering a whole community around the blogs as well? You're actually getting in touch with people through your blogs. You're actually having almost a social network surrounding the blog. We have uh, blogger meets once a month in Bombay. And Delhi has blogger meets. And recently they've started a Mumbai Twitter meets, where everyone who Twitters uh, meets up as well. Twitter, for those of you who don't know it, is an application you can, uh, you can get to on the internet. Look it up, twitter.com. Uh, Kenny, you must be, you, your blog is not unlike Minakshi's. Do you find uh, there's a lot of like, social activity going around your blog? Yes, definitely. Uh, uh, just to give you an example, I, I returned to Malaysia from overseas about three years ago in 2005. And back when, back when I first came back, I have 